A glimpse into history is encapsulated within vintage photographs, serving as a portal to bygone eras. These visual records enable us to behold occurrences and instances that might be beyond our conceptualization. This presentation offers a sneak peek into a selection of invaluable photographs, holding profound importance for the scientific and historical communities. Appreciate the visual journey. The man in the iron mask stands as one of the enduring enigmas of Louis XIV's reign. Captured in 1669, he endured an astonishing 34 years of captivity, his identity meticulously concealed behind an iron mask by order of Louis XIV. Known as Eustache Dauger in historical records, doubts persist about the authenticity of this name. The captive, guarded by vigilant warden Bernardo Verne de Samar, traversed various prisons, culminating in the infamous Bastille. Despite humane treatment due to his serene disposition, unveiling the mask meant instant execution. On November 19, 1703, he passed away, and in a final act of secrecy, his personal effects and remains were incinerated. Speculation about his true identity has persisted, with some suggesting a potential kinship with Louis XIV, perhaps even a twin. Yet for most, the man in the iron mask remains a character immortalized by Alexander Dumas in The Vicomte of Bragelonne, and later in a dedicated play, The Prisoner of the Bastille. Exploring the Amber Room within the Catherine Palace proves to be a comprehensive and enthralling encounter. Each aspect of this artistic marvel beckons for close examination. Nevertheless, what greets palace visitors today is merely a replica, as the original room is deemed missing. The origins of this unparalleled masterpiece date back to the 18th century, when Prussian King Frederick I commissioned the creation of a grand chamber featuring panels crafted from the most exquisite amber and adorned with elegant friezes meticulously fashioned by German artisans. Peter the Great, captivated during his visits to Prussia, expressed perpetual enchantment with this marvel. Following the Prussian king's demise, his son, Frederick William I, bestowed the amber chamber upon Peter as a gift. Although Peter I was initially overjoyed with the long-awaited gift, it unfortunately slipped from his memory, and the room's contents were stored for 25 years in the chambers of Ludwigsburg in the summer garden. It was Peter's daughter, Elizabeth, who recalled this masterpiece. Acting on her command, the chamber was installed in the Winter Palace and subsequently moved to the Catherine Palace. During World War II, the Nazis, notorious for looting art objects, targeted the Amber Room. They pilfered this precious masterpiece and transported it to Königsberg Castle, where it remained until August 1944. Tragically, following a British aviation attack, the castle was reduced to ashes. However, amidst the ruins, no traces of the Amber Room were discovered. Since then, this extraordinary work of art has eluded the gaze of humanity. Numerous theories abound regarding the mysterious disappearance of the room. Some suggest it may have perished in the flames, while others propose that it was expertly concealed. The intrigue surrounding the Black Knight satellite photo has spawned various conspiracy theories, suggesting it could be an ancient alien spacecraft orbiting Earth for millennia. Claims of NASA concealing its existence or it being a Cold War spy satellite circulate. However, scrutiny of the NASA STS-88 mission photo from 1998 identifies it as space debris, specifically a lost thermal blanket. On another note, the Apollo 14 mission introduced another enigma, unexplained lunar lights. A photo captured during the mission reveals a peculiar blue light on the lunar surface, sparking theories ranging from sunlight reflections to electrostatic discharge or plasma phenomena. Despite proposed explanations, the origin of these lunar lights remains a mystery. These instances underscore the fascinating interplay between scientific exploration and captivating human imagination. 
while closer examination often unveils down-to-earth explanations. The allure of the unexplained persists, encouraging ongoing exploration and curiosity about the mysteries surrounding our celestial neighbors. Amidst the 1950s, the Cooper family initiated a fresh chapter by acquiring an aged residence in Texas. On their inaugural night, the father, eager to seize the moment, photographed the family at the dining table. Mr. Cooper's wife, their two sons, and his mother, portraying the joy of their American dream's commencement. Over time, the home's allure waned, replaced by an unexpected mystery. Developing the film at a local pharmacy revealed an unsettling discovery, a figure hanging from the ceiling, absent during the photo's capture, bewildering the family. In 2009, the image, titled Family Gathering, gained online attention. Doubt about its authenticity arose, with some deeming it potentially fake. Speculation leaned towards double exposure, where two images overlap unintentionally during development. The Cooper family's snapshot, intended to immortalize joy, now stands as a mysterious relic. Despite technological progress and online debates, the hanging figure's true origin and nature persist as an enigma, crafting an enduring tale within an ostensibly ordinary family photo. The Naga Fireballs present a captivating and mysterious phenomenon, emerging from Thailand's Mekong River and sparking fascination. The origin of these glowing orbs has spurred varied explanations, including a proposed natural chemical reaction and conspiracy theories suggesting human intervention. Local folklore adds a supernatural dimension to the mystery, deepening its allure. Each year, as the Naga fireballs illuminate the night sky, they enthrall both locals and visitors, fueling debates on their nature. Amid scientific inquiries, these fireballs stand as a compelling fusion of natural wonders, human intrigue, and the enchanting narratives of folklore that enrich our perception of the world. This photograph unveils a peculiar contraption that might challenge belief in today's world. The modern age bombards us with constant noise and myriad gadgets, diverting our attention and complicating our focus. In an era saturated with information, maintaining concentration becomes challenging. Mobile apps attempt to address this, but their effectiveness varies. Interestingly, a similar concern existed in the 1920s, leading inventor Hugo Gernsback to create the Isolator, a large wooden helmet lined with felt, featuring glass pieces for the eyes and a sound-absorbing partition near the mouth. This whimsical device stands as one of the most intriguing inventions of the 20th century. This series of images showcases inventions from bygone centuries that not only appear unusual, but also possess a somewhat unsettling aspect. The initial photograph captures a girl in a swimming pool, wearing a peculiar swimming mask that could easily be mistaken for a horror film prop. Surprisingly, this mask, with its frightening appearance, was invented in 1928 to protect swimmers' faces from the harmful effects of ultraviolet rays. The second photograph unveils an invention that exudes an eerie quality, reminiscent of a leather-clad monster. In reality, it represents one of the earliest wetsuits from the early 18th century known as the Old Gentleman. Crafted from cowhide and treated with a mixture of pig fat and resin, this entirely waterproof suit featured seam sewn with waxed thread and filled with resin. Divers would enter the suit through a front opening, and air was supplied through wooden pipes via a piston pump, with excess air released through a smaller tube at the back. This fascinating invention now finds its place in the Finnish Museum of Diving. The 1964 Solway Firth Spaceman photograph has captivated individuals for years. Depicting a mysterious figure resembling a spaceman behind a girl, 
the photo underwent police and forensic scrutiny, confirming its authenticity and perplexing nature. One theory proposed by UFO author David Clark suggests the figure might be Templeton's wife, Annie. Clark speculates that Templeton overlooked her in the camera's viewfinder, and her white dress, due to overexposure, created an optical illusion resembling a woman. Other researchers go further, proposing the figure as a time traveler or extraterrestrial being. These diverse theories turn the Solway Firth spaceman into an enigma, fueling ongoing debates among enthusiasts of the unexplained. Despite technological advances and speculations, the true identity and nature of the figure in the photo remain elusive, preserving the mystery in this intriguing piece of photographic history. The Solway Firth Spaceman continues to captivate the imagination of those drawn to the unexplained, leaving room for speculation and wonder. Within these images emerges a bearded man with wild, intense eyes, Grigory Rasputin. He stands as one of the most enigmatic figures in Russian history. Rasputin gained widespread recognition after earning the trust of the Romanov royal family. Prior to meeting the emperor, he presented himself as a holy man endowed with the ability to heal and foretell the future. Despite his rather unappealing appearance, Rasputin enjoyed popularity among affluent women who perhaps believed in his supernatural powers. Over time, word of the healer reached the ears of the royal family. Nicholas II's only son, Alexei, suffered from hemophilia, and none of the doctors or faith healers seemed to offer any relief. It was then that the emperor's wife, Alexandra, decided to invite Rasputin. Surprisingly, the boy's condition genuinely improved in Rasputin's presence. Historians remain baffled by how this self-proclaimed healer managed to produce such a positive effect, with some speculating that he employed hypnosis. Rasputin also purportedly had the ability to predict the future. However, amidst the tales surrounding Rasputin, one prediction turned out to be chillingly accurate. The prediction of his own death and the demise of the entire royal family. In a letter to the emperor, he foretold that he would not live to see January and that if Nicholas II was involved in his demise, the entire royal family would face death at the hands of the people. On the night of December 29, 1916, a group of nobles, including the emperor's cousin, assassinated Rasputin. Just a little over a year and a half later, in July 1918, Nicholas II, along with his wife Alexandra and their five children, met a tragic end when they were shot. The provided image, to say the least, presents a disconcerting scene, a multitude of human teeth. One might ponder why anyone would amass such a peculiar collection. The narrative behind this discovery involves laborers conducting renovations on the second floor of a structure dating back to the year 1900 in Valdosta, Georgia. In the course of the renovations, these workers happened upon this unusual find, a significant number of teeth concealed within the walls of the building. Intrigued by their discovery, the workers opted to capture an image of it and subsequently shared it with a local newspaper. Following the publication of a concise article featuring the image, local historians launched an inquiry. It was revealed that on the first floor of the same building, there once operated a pharmacy. Simultaneously, on the second floor, a dental office was managed by a certain Dr. Clarence Whittington. The pieces of the puzzle seem to fall into place with this information. However, a lingering question remains. Why did this dentist amass teeth from his patients? What's even more perplexing is the fact that analogous discoveries of human teeth concealed within walls were made in other buildings in Valdosta and Carrollton. This peculiar practice raises the question of whether dentists of that era had some unconventional method for disposing of extracted patient teeth or if there's another mysterious reason behind their concealment within building walls.
In contemporary society, it's nearly inconceivable to envision life without electricity. The absence of electricity would thrust the world into a state of complete chaos, and contemplating existence without this essential resource is challenging. Nevertheless, it's thought-provoking to consider that toward the conclusion of the 19th century, the introduction of electricity faced resistance in various cities across the globe. In the streets of certain cities, peculiar structures connected by wires began to emerge. These early power lines marked the onset of a transformative technological era. Interestingly, not everyone welcomed this new technology with enthusiasm. In fact, there were skeptics who held reservations about the embrace of electricity. This poster, crafted in 1900, serves as evidence of the opposition against electrification. Legend has it that the poster's narrative was inspired by a real incident in 1889. During that year, a lineman named John Fix was diligently working on a Manhattan street when an unforeseen accident occurred. In a tragic twist of events, Fix was fatally electrocuted, a harrowing incident witnessed by onlookers. Unquestionably, the event instilled fear in the hearts of those who were just beginning to grapple with the notion of this convenient yet seemingly perilous innovation. However, with the passage of time, skeptics diminished in number, and society came to recognize the indispensable role electricity plays in our daily lives, solidifying it as a cornerstone of modern civilization. We have finally reached the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.